guys and once again welcome to another lesson in PE and health and you know who it is this is your one and only PE sensei so for this lesson we are going to continue tackling the different kinds of arm motion in cheerleading so this one is going to be very similar with our last lesson the only difference is that we are going to learn different types of arm motions for this lesson so now without any further delay Turn on your cheerleading spirit and now let us jump to the step-by-step -step tutorial of different arm motions in cheerleading. Let's go! Okay everyone, just like I've said, this is the part 2 video of our arm motions in cheerleading. So let's start. So to start our tutorial, uh, stand or our starting position should be a clean position. Alright, so clean. So our first arm motion for this video is this one is called as the T or the T arm motion. So it is very simple. Just create a capital letter T with your whole body. Alright, so this is how it should look like. So as you can see, the big E is facing in front. Okay, so this is called the T pose T position. So, this is the view in a side view angle. And once again, as you can see, my arms are slightly forward. And I can see them on my peripheral vision. So, this is the T position. So, from clean, when you do a T posture or T position, this is the pathway of your arms. T. For our next arm motion, we will start with the T position. T. Now, this next arm motion is called the broken T. So it's very simple. You just go to the T position and broke or break your T. Alright, so T, broken T. T, broken T. And this time, the small E is in front. T, broken T. T, broken T. Alright, now, our next arm motion is called the right broken T. So, to do a right broken T, uh, you will extend your left arm. Okay? Because the right side is the one that should be broken. Okay? So, from broken T, when I say right broken T, extend your left arm. And then left broken T, right broken T, left broken T, right broken T, left broken T, right broken T. Okay? Now, our next arm motion, this one is called the L position. So, to do the L arm motion, start with a clean position. Now, the, just like in right broken T and left broken T, this, the L position have two sides. So, when I say right L, you will raise your right arm and then your left arm should be in a T position. Okay. So, once again, Right arm in a bucket position. Okay, do you recall the bucket? Okay. And the left arm should be on a T position. So this one is called the right L. So the one arm that is facing upward, the small E is the one that should be facing forward. And the other hand or the other arm, the big E is the one that is facing forward. Okay? So this is the view from a side view angle. And this one is called the right L. So, from a clean position, this is the pathway of your arms. So, both arms should always be straight at all times. And, L. Clean, L. Clean, L. Clean, L. Clean, L. Okay? Now, left L. Very simple. Just switch. Okay? So this is the left. Right L. Left now, from our last arm motion, this one is called the K. So, uh, this one is a little tricky because uh, you're gonna use your feet in this arm motion. So, this is how you should do it. So, first start in an L arm motion. And then, the one, this one is called the right L, correct? So, all you have to do is drag your left arm all the way to this side. 
So, as you can see, um, this time, the arm that is facing upward, the big E is facing forward. And the arm that is on in a horizontal position, the small E is facing forward. Now, for your feet, right? So, your right feet or the... Okay, so... So, your right foot should face this direction and your left foot, step it backwards and it should face that direction and slightly bend your right leg. So this is how a K should look like. And one more thing, always face forward. Okay? So this one is called the right K. So whatever side I'm mentioning, um, if I say right K, the right arm should be the one that is uh, facing or should be raised upwards. So once again, this one is called the right K. So from a clean position, to do a right K, you will do a mini jump, all right, to do the right K. So clean and then right K, okay? Clean, right K, clean, right K, clean, right K, clean. Okay, now for the other side, left K. Just reverse everything that we do on this direction. And for the left K, and left K. Okay? So clean, and left K. So look at my feet. Left leg or left foot facing that direction. Right foot facing this direction. This time, the right leg is straight, and the left leg is slightly bent. Okay? So clean. Now, if we're going to transition from right K to left K, this is how it should look like. So from clean position, do a right K. And we're going to transition to the other side. Uh, do a clean in between or uh, while you're transitioning from this direction to the other direction. So right K and then clean left. All right, clean, 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 clean. Right. So this time, for our activity, just like in our first arm motion video, we will create an arm motion sequence with the arm motions that we've learned in this video. Okay, so for our arm motion sequence, once again, start in a clean position, not the count of one, create two, a T position. So, one, at the count of two, do a broken T, two, at the count of three, back to T position, three, at the count of four, back to broken T, four. Now, for the next count, we will do a right broken T, five. And then six, left broken T, six, seven, right broken T, and then eight, left broken T. All right, let's do everything from the top. Now, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now for our next count, do a right L. So from this position, do a right L. One. And then the count of and the next count, do a left L. Two. Next count, right L. Three. And left L. Four. Now the count of five, do a right K. Five. And then back to clean position at the count of six. Six. Left K, the count of eight. seven. Seven. And then clean at the count of eight. So let's try to do everything from the top with a slow pace. Okay? So five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven. Now this time, let's try to apply the footwork just like in our first video. So two steps forward and two steps backward at each and every count. So let's do it slowly. So first at the count of one, step. Count of two, step. And then backward. Three. And then four. And then forward once again. One. Two. Backward. Three. Four. Next count. One, two, three, four. Now this time, of course, we're going to do okay. Uh, just jump in place. And five, 
six, seven, eight. Alright, let's try to do it everything from the top uh, with a faster pace. So, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's it for the different blocks in our knees incorporated with our different kind of footwork. And remember to keep on practicing until you can get it right. And reminder about our safety measures while doing or before engaging in these kind of activities. And as usual, I'll be looking forward for your video submissions. Now I guess it's time to wrap up everything with our closing segment called The Health Trends. and welcome back to health trend so for this health trend i will teach you how to choose or pick the perfect rubber shoes or running shoes for your feet so in order to know the perfect rubber shoes or running shoes for your feet first you must know what type of feet you possess so for the type of feet there are only three categories that is very important and number one is the flat footed type number two is the normal arch type and number three is the high arch type. So first for flat-footed people, so if you are flat-footed, uh, your feet are rigid or they are not very flexible. So if you want a new rubber shoes, you want one that can provide a lot of support so that the muscles and tendons and ligaments in your feet won't be overextended when you undergo different kinds of exercises like running or walking. So the type of rubber shoes that is best suited for flat-footed people is rubber shoes that has motion control. So this is an example of a rubber shoes that has motion control. So if you observe closely from the word motion control, uh, it limits the motion of your feet. So the sole is very hard. As you can see, I am having a lot of trouble trying to bend the sole and it provides a lot of support so that your feet won't be overextended. Next is for high arch footed people. So if you are high arch footed, uh, your feet are easily stressed because high arch footed people have more pressure on their feet compared to normal arch footed people. So if you belong in that category, the type of rubber shoes that you would want or best suits you are rubber shoes that has a lot of cushioning ability. So this is an example of that. So as you can see from the sole, it is very thick. And aside from thickness, it is very soft. There you go. As you can see, I can squeeze it easily. And aside from that, uh, it is very flexible. So there's a lot of mobility. I can easily bend the sole. So there you go. Once again, if you are high arch footed or if you belong in the high arch category the best rubber shoes suited for you are rubber shoes with high cushioning ability and lastly for the normal arch footed people so basically if you have normal arch foot you can wear any kind of rubber shoes that you would like or you would prefer but the best type of running shoes or rubber shoes for that category are rubber shoes with stabilizers or stabilizer running shoes so from its name uh, these rubber shoes uh, prioritize stability and the characteristic of running shoes or rubber shoes with stabilizers are somewhere in between these two the one with motion control and the one with high cushion uh, it is somewhere in between them because the sole of the stabilizer running shoes is still flexible as you can see it still bends but not as easy as the high cushion rubber shoes because as you can see here this one bends a lot easier and also 
the sole is still soft but not as soft as the high cushion running shoes or not as hard as the motion control running shoes. So just like I've said earlier, the characteristic is somewhere in between these two. And that's it. Uh, the perfect rubber shoes for normal arch-footed people is running shoes or rubber shoes with stabilizers. And that's it for this week's health trend. I hope that this information is gonna be useful in your future sneaker shopping or rubber shoes shopping. And that's it. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye everyone. Ciao.